Hey, it's your old pal Lucid Stew again. We are continuing to look at the Federal Railroad Administration High Speed Rail Corridors. In this video, we will discuss the Chicago Hub Network. Chicago Hub spans nine states near the Great Lakes and has the potential to connect up to a dozen major metropolitan areas. The states involved are Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, Kentucky, Michigan, Minnesota, Missouri, Ohio, and Wisconsin. Combined, those states have a population of about 67 million or one-fifth of all people living in the United States. These states have a combined land area of about 450,000 square miles, which is three Montanas. Population density is about 160 people per square mile, or 50% more than Texas. The major metro areas in this region are mostly 100 to 400 miles apart, right in High Speed Rail's wheelhouse. These cities were established and built up in an era before intercity passenger road vehicle travel existed. As a result, they have established in compact downtown areas, typically serviced directly by rail rights of way. Many of these cities were 19th and 20th century industrial powerhouses that now make up our nation's rust belt. This is an area that has experienced economic challenges in recent decades as our national economy shifts away from what these areas were once best at. The urban cores have been especially hard hit as people have moved out of them and into the suburbs. This leaves these metro cores ripe for redevelopment. As a result, many factors that make construction of a high-speed rail system desirable exist throughout this region. Chicago is the largest metro region in this collection at about 10 million people. This makes it a highly desirable destination for traffic from other metros in the region. Here is a full map of the intended Chicago hub network. The nature of this work is of the upgrade kind along existing routes as discussed in my case for high speed rail video. This approach could take a very long time to get up to true high speed. Let's look at some challenges this concept is facing. Problem number one, it is very Chicago centric. Chicago has been the hub of American passenger rail travel since the 19th century and it certainly has been that for Amtrak since its inception. Nearly all of the routes in the Chicago hub network run to Chicago. Chicago has built up in such a way that its inner city is a tangle of freight, intercity, regional, and commuter rail. This high-speed rail network has to contend with that. The goal is to route high-speed rail traffic coming to and through Chicago into Union Station, but a major and very expensive upgrade is required to facilitate that. Chicago Union is the fourth busiest passenger train station in the United States and handles traffic equivalent to a large airport. The proposed solution would require at least two one and one half mile tracks tunneled under downtown Chicago. A two mile tunnel is also needed to get to Union Station from existing rights of way. The two combined would cost 10 to 12 billion dollars, but this is a necessary upgrade. Without those upgrades, you wind up with disconnected high-speed rail systems that terminate at Chicago, which would mostly defeat the purpose of the system. Problem number two, the Chicago hub network spans nine states but receives minimal federal help or coordination. High-speed rail corridors in this region so far have mostly been attempts by states to build corridors within their own borders, Illinois with the line from Chicago to St. Louis, Ohio between Cleveland and Cincinnati. Michigan is talking about all over the place. The main exception is the line to Minneapolis-St. Paul that has been discussed for over three decades now, albeit with little movement. You have a strong argument here for greater federal involvement and influence. Something like California high-speed rail doesn't need it so much except for funding. That's all in one state. Chicago Hub Network is a true interstate project that has potential to connect to six other regional high-speed rail corridors. That calls for our national government to step in and help out in a greater capacity. Problem number three, building five high-speed rail systems in one. 
problems number one and two are partially caused because we're jamming five separate high-speed rail lines together to form a network around Chicago. What would the independent parts look like if we didn't want to commit to the Chicago hub network as a country? Could the states mostly accomplish this themselves? Chicago to Detroit and Cleveland via Toledo. The FRA plan in this area has two different east-west routes, one to Detroit and one to Toledo, even though they're only about 50 miles apart. This sounds far less likely at anything more than 110 miles per hour. I think it's laid out like this because that line to Detroit is the only significant right-of-way outside of the NEC that Amtrak owns. That line isn't bad if you bridge the gap between Detroit and Toledo, but I'm ditching that and going with one line along the I-90 corridor reaching both Detroit and Cleveland through Toledo, Ohio. This would cost about $36 billion and connect metropolitan areas totaling 17 million people. This would be a four-state project. The route through Indiana and lack of connectivity in Michigan beyond Detroit could prove politically unpopular, but there's a longer-term solution for that in a larger system. Distance from Chicago to Detroit is 280 miles. A line of this expense could average 140 miles per hour for a two-hour trip. Time from Chicago to Cleveland would be similar. Chicago to Cincinnati, 15 million people connected for $24 billion. This links the largest metros in Illinois, Indiana, and Ohio. However, the route is very Indiana-centric. It seems feasible politically, but it would need a lot of support in Indiana. Average speed around 150 miles per hour and travel times from Chicago of 75 minutes to Indianapolis and 2 hours to Cincinnati. This part also fits in the FRA corridor for that part, which would make consistent federal funding more likely. Spiritually, it's similar to the existing Lincoln service between Chicago and St. Louis, but add another sizable metro in the middle and higher speed. In terms of practicality and doability, I think this is the premier singular portion of the Chicago Hub Network. Chicago to Minneapolis-St. Paul, $16 million connected for $48 billion. Another three-state project connecting the largest metros in Illinois, Wisconsin, and Minnesota. This is a mixed route between Milwaukee and Chicago. This would be a little slower and more commuter-centric. Same with a relatively short connection to Madison, then a longer distance run out to Minneapolis-St. Paul, which would be centered much more on intercity travel. It's similar politically to the Chicago to Cincinnati run in that the vast majority of the route is in one state, Wisconsin in this case. I have the trip from Chicago to Minneapolis-St. Paul at roughly three hours or about 140 miles per hour on average. The $48 billion price tag is 80% of Wisconsin's yearly state budget. Back to Ohio, we have the 3C corridor, which links Cincinnati, Columbus, and Cleveland all in Ohio. Cost would be about $23 billion and would connect roughly 7 million people. The issues here are that this system is entirely in Ohio, and it's a big expense for what you get if it doesn't connect to anything else. So far, Ohio hasn't made any progress on this concept, and it's far more valuable as part of a larger system. In the larger system I've imagined, this corridor has some of the best travel times to other metros. Chicago to Kansas City via St. Louis. This connects 15 million people in two states and would cost about $46 billion. This corridor is currently serviced by Amtrak, with one train a day at an average of 50 miles per hour. As Missouri has had difficulty with service between St. Louis and Kansas City, a project that is 10 times their yearly transportation budget might be a tall order. While Illinois is actively investing in their part of this corridor, a line that could average in the 150 mile per hour range would represent a substantial increase in investment over current. In any case, $46 billion would net a 3-hour, 40-minute trip over the 450 miles between Chicago and Kansas City. Chicago to St. Louis could be achieved in 2 hours or about 40% of the current time by rail.
Instead of slowly upgrading existing lines as we currently do with Amtrak, I propose going straight to true high-speed rail using some principles and lessons learned on other projects. Our guiding HSR principles are, number one, separate passenger and freight, especially away from urban and suburban areas. This allows higher max speed and cuts travel time between destination pairs. Number two, utilize existing corridors. This includes passenger and freight rail as well as interstate highway rights of way. New rights of way will be necessary occasionally, but minimizing those avoids delay and cost. Number three, fairly straight rights of way that are completely grade separated in order to maintain high speed and safety. Number four, avoid costly viaducts and tunneling if possible. Number five, the core metro station should be in or very close to downtown areas in order to move from density to density and foster urban redevelopment. Number six, connect to existing transit to foster intermodality, bolster regional transit and ease congestion on roadways. Number seven, connect to international airports near the route for the same reasons as number six, but also to increase the usefulness of the high-speed rail line to a given metro area and the region. Applying these principles, I came up with this system. I estimate cost around $200 billion, including the Chicago Union Station work. My methodology is simple and quick. It looks at the route, new or existing right away. And if that runs through urban, suburban, or rural areas, underground, aerial, or at grade. Applied to the California High-Speed Rail Phase 1 route, I got $80.5 billion. Brightline West, I came up with $12.8 billion. These are both within 7% of official estimates with all factors considered, so I feel good about the method and the estimated costs I've settled on. $200 billion would be for a system of 1,900 miles of track connecting 10 major and 3 mid-sized metropolitan areas. Assuming completion after California High-Speed Rail and Brightline West, this would almost quadruple the amount of high-speed rail in the country. I figure this could be done in 12 to 15 years if all parts were begun simultaneously with some sections operational a few years earlier. If built in phases, it would probably take twice as long at a minimum. This is another reason this concept could use greater federal involvement. What kind of travel times would result? Let's look at a few examples. Minneapolis to Milwaukee, 344 miles in 2 hours 20 minutes. Chicago to Detroit, 282 miles in 2 hours 5 minutes. Indianapolis to St. Louis, 244 miles in 1 hour 30 minutes. Louisville to Columbus, 206 miles in 1 hour 25 minutes. Detroit to Cleveland, 162 miles in 1 hour 20 minutes. And Cincinnati to Cleveland, 271 miles in 2 hours flat. I didn't go out of my way to make it super fast. I was aiming for 140 to 160 mile per hour express averages between most metro areas. I found that generally you could make these routes 15% faster than that range by spending about 30% more. As with my opinion on California high-speed rail, I think a cheaper and slightly slower system is adequate and more likely to be accomplished. Either way, these are big ideas with big challenges. I've envisioned the whole system slightly differently than the current version. I like an express route between Indianapolis and St. Louis along Interstate 70 instead of the existing Lincoln service route to connect Chicago with St. Louis at high speed. This would improve travel times in the southern part of the system at a reasonable penalty to traffic coming from the northwest and transfer some of the hub burden from Chicago to Indianapolis. Politically, you'd still probably need to commit to upgrading the uh, Interstate 55 Lincoln service route to keep Illinois interested, and it would continue to make a very good regional rail complement to both Chicago and St. Louis. I concluded that Kansas City is not worth it. Except for St. Louis and Indianapolis, travel time from Kansas City to the rest of the system would be over four hours, and I just don't see how that jibes 
with the $22 billion expense. I opted to reach Louisville from Cincinnati rather than Indianapolis. Going through Indianapolis needlessly delays traffic to Louisville from Ohio by almost an hour. Like Interstate 55, the currently identified route near Interstate 65 is still worth supporting with 110 mile per hour regional rail development. I left out the line to Omaha through Iowa entirely. This would be more expensive than Kansas City and only connect two thirds as many people. Again, probably works fine as 110 mile per hour regional rail. Some considerations for further expansion. Detroit to Toronto, Canada. 220 miles, totally flat with good route options. Greater Toronto has a population of 6 million, the best possible extension of Chicago hub by far. Cleveland or Columbus to Pittsburgh, 120 to 170 miles depending on the route. No matter how you slice it, it's a challenge and not cheap for what you get. Has the potential to connect to the NEC if they can manage to electrify the Keystone Corridor out to Pittsburgh. St. Louis to Kansas City and beyond, 250 miles plus. As stated earlier, it doesn't make much sense to me. Becomes a different proposition if high-speed rail manages to get to Oklahoma City, but frankly, I'd still take a pass. High-speed rail just doesn't make much sense in the United States west of the Mississippi, outside of Texas and the West Coast. This graphic also tells you a lot about why our federal system is a headwind against large-scale high-speed rail. The fact that it shouldn't be built here automatically alienates a quarter of the Senate. Louisville to Nashville, 170 miles. It's a little expensive for what you get in terms of making the cut for Chicago Hub Network by itself. If high-speed rail gets built between Atlanta and Chattanooga and the Chicago Hub Network is built, Nashville becomes a whole new ball game. Cleveland to Buffalo, New York, 190 miles. The only thing this has going for it is the connection to the Empire Corridor. If that were electrified, you'd be able to connect to the NEC via the Hudson River Valley. The distances are nothing to sneeze at though at over 600 miles to New York City from Cleveland. Connecting via Pittsburgh and the Keystone Corridor makes more sense. West Michigan Connector, 80 to 110 miles along either Interstate 196 or US 131 to Grand Rapids, then 150 miles near Interstate 96 to Detroit. This combined with existing Amtrak service at up to 110 miles per hour would provide very solid rail service for Southern Michigan and connect about 2 million more people. Expensive for what you get though. If twice as many people lived along the route, it would be a different story. All that would give you something like this. It's interesting to consider the future of high-speed rail in the United States, even if it is a little fanciful. We'll continue to do just that as we run through the remaining Federal Railroad Administration corridors in coming videos. Up next is the Empire Corridor. But that's all for now. Until next time, I'll see you on that big beautiful freeway.